Hey guys, Waluigi Walkthroughs here with some more Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. In the last part, we found the sacred water and gave it to the water dragon, and the water dragon in return opened up the dungeon. The next dungeon, but in this part and in the next part, or in the next couple parts, I have no idea how long this is going to take, we are actually going to be taking care of a few side quests before we head off to the next dungeon. Yes, these side quests are long overdue, but I feel like it's the perfect time to actually just take a break from the main quest and deal with some of these things. So before we actually go do that, I want to return to Farron Woods and a couple other places in order to collect some items. Yes, um, these items are not goddess cubes or treasure chests or anything like that. These are actually just treasures in general. Um, so for this first treasure, I want to go grab some Deku... I'm not Deku, I mean, uh, Hornet Larvae, yes. So you can find Hornet Larvae in different parts in Farron Woods. Uh, I find that the easiest place to find Hornet Larvae is actually here down by Skyview Temple. Uh, how you get Hornet Larvae... Alright, there's a Deku Scrub here. I mean, uh, Octorok. Alright, how you get Hornet Larvae is you need to knock down a Hornet's Nest. And once you knock down the Hornet's Nest, the Hornet Larvae will just be there for you to pick up. Unfortunately... Once you grab the hornet larvae, you have to deal with the bees. So you can actually just grab the bees with your bug net. I find it's an easy way to grab them. And I guess those bees just care more about the bacoblin down there. Anyway, this is the hornet larvae. This is actually the first time we've got one in the game. And this actually marks the completion of all the types of treasures that you can grab in this game. And where's that bacoblin? It's getting mauled to death by those bees. <laughs> It's actually pretty funny that the bees can actually do that. Well, anyway, I'm going to go collect one more, and I'll see you guys later. Alright, now that I've collected uh, both hornet larvae, um, I'm going to have to go collect some more stuff, but before we go collect that, we're actually going to initiate our first side quest. So, yay! Uh, the hornet larvae is used for upgrading some items, and that's exactly why I'm going to be collecting treasures, because I'm planning on upgrading a couple items. Anyway, where we're heading off is Fun Fun Island. It's that little um, island there that's colorful in the lower southwest area of the sky. I always want to call the sky Skyloft, but Skyloft is only one island. Anyway, over here on Fun Fun Island, there's a little mini game we can play, but unfortunately, we can't really do that for now because in order to activate the mini game, we have to do a little side quest. So, Geronimo! Now, this place looks bummer. <laughs> bummer? What is This place just looks depressing. Uh, what am I going to do? It's no use. It's all over. Oh, what's wrong? You see, the party wheel that I planned pinned to the back flew off the island and fell down somewhere below the clouds. Without my party wheel, there's just no way I can make the island a place. What can I do? It fell down below the clouds, so I guess I should just give up on it. How am I supposed to go get something that fell below the clouds? That's impossible! Your dousing ability can be calibrated to locate the item that this person needs, or whatever. So, we need to go find that pin wheel, or that party wheel that was pinned to this guy's back. So yes, we do want to target douse for the party wheel. Yes, thank you, Fee. And there we go. There's a 90% chance that the item will have landed in Lanayru Desert. Take this as advice. Go to Lanayru Desert. Alright. Ugh, oh, it would be so amazing if someone were to find it. Um, I don't really think children come out here. I don't really think people let the children fly out here, but... Oh well, it's your dream, buddy. Anyway, we want to go over to Lanayru Desert to go find that party wheel. Uh, finding the party wheel is actually not going to be that tough, but we will be able to explore a little bit of the area and go find somewhere that's a little bit new. It's not really all that new of an area, but it's somewhere that we haven't really been to before, so I consider it new. Anyway, if only we could fly a little bit faster, and Geronimo! Okay. So, we want to land at the entrance to the desert. So... In desert entrance, there we go. Yes, descend. Descend! 
All right, so while we're here, I'm going to go collect some tumbleweed. Um, I want to collect nine extra tumbleweed than we actually have, so I'll see you guys then. <laughs> yep, fun times collecting tumbleweed. All right, so now that I've collected the tumbleweed, you can just stand here in the desert entrance area and just wait for the tumbleweed to come by and just grab it with your bug net. So as you can see, I got enough tumbleweed. Um, we won't be really using a whole lot of it right now, but... Items later on in the game, we will be able to upgrade them using it. So, in order to find the party wheel, back here by the bird statue, there is a boulder that we can blow up. And it's the one on the left, I believe. Yeah. Alright, so let's roll it over there, get the good curve on it. Awesome. And underneath this boulder is a time shift stone. That's how you return back to the mining area at the very, very beginning of Lanayru region, so it just activates this minecart, but we don't want to go there. Instead, if you head past the minecart, you'll notice that there are some vines here that we can now grab onto. These vines are only there once we activate the time shift stone, also we can grab an ancient flower. Yay, we replenished the one ancient flower that we used to revive Scrapper. Alright, so now, over here we're going to have to do some small platforming, or ledge walking, or ledge, ledge sliding. Because over here is the party wheel, yep. So this is what I'm talking about why we haven't really been in this area before, it's a little bit new. We're exploring some more of this place, that's nice. Alright, so you can definitely make it, it's not that hard. Definitely won't run out of stamina, unless you run around before you um, grab the ledge. And over here is the party wheel, so let's target it. I have identified the item that the highly unusual man on Fun Fun Island was talking about. We can call the Scrap Shop Robot. His name's Scrapper. Learn it. Master, I will send a word to the robot using telepathic transmission. That is some fast service, I must say. <laughs> Mistress Fee, Zerp, you called? Whoa, Zerp, this place seems strangely familiar, Zerp. Zerp, so you want me to carry this thing? Okay, okay, Zerp, you just sit tight there and stay out of my way, Master Short Pants. Zerp. I'll be waiting for you in the sky, so don't take too long, Vert. Master, I suggest that we head back to the sky and return the party wheel to the owner. Alright, good thing. But before we go do that, if you look down here, there is a chest that we can grab, and inside should be a rare treasure, I believe. Um, either a goddess plume or a bird feather. Oh, it's another goddess plume. Man, this thing just looks like a crystal. It doesn't even look like a plume, it just looks like a hard crystal. Oh, man. I mean, we're collecting a lot of these things. They're not very rare, are they? <laughs> and you really don't use them all that much in upgrading items, so... I guess you can just sell them off later on. Anyway. Um, the Linear Ants, we already have a couple of those. Yeah, I definitely have to also get on to collecting some of the bugs that we have yet to find. Because we can definitely grab them all now. I mean, we've explored every area, so we should be able to find them all. Anyway. Next stop was Skyloft, so I'll see you guys there. Fly. All right, down in Fun Fun Island. I just landed on my face. I'm pretty sure I said I was going to be at Skyloft, but I lied. We have to return the fun party wheel to the Fun Fun Island owner. Hey, here's our wheel thing, Bzert. Now set it down nice and easy. That is not nice and easy. If you want something else, Bzert, just let me know. Is this? Is this? It is! It is! I'm weird! <laughs> oh, thank you so much! Now I can realize my dream of opening Fun Fun Island! Woo, yay! I'm so happy! And I'll just let you be my first customer, young man! Thank you so much! It's going to be so much fun! And for doing something really nice, 
we get the five gratitude crystals. It's weird, the party wheel has lights on it, but from the way Scrapper was treating it, those lights should have just cracked the moment it was dropped on the ground. So that's some that's some sturdy party wheel, I mean. Anyway, we're gonna be coming here and doing the minigame later on, but for now, we wanna head to Skyloft and collect more things, so I'll see you guys there. Alright, back in Skyloft, now with the Water Dragon scale, we can swim in the water. Uh, there are a few things that we can explore here, but I'm not actually going to do that until much later in the game. But over here, I want to return back to the Waterfall Cave. Inside, I'm going to try to collect... Um, how many Monster Claws am I... Seven Monster Claws, that's right. I'm going to try to find seven Monster Claws, and I believe this is the easiest place to find them because of all the keys that are in here. So... Um, it's a little bit of a bit of a luck thing or probability because not every keys will contain a monster claw. So I'm gonna have to go back and forth between this place. Luckily, once you leave, the keys will respawn and everything. So yeah, I'll just continue going back from one end to the other. But over here, we can collect a firefly, and this should be a new bug to add to our collection. We caught one starry firefly. Um, you can find these also at night in Skyloft, but anyway. Alright, so I'll see you guys once I collect the monster claws. So, yep, seven of them. Alright, as you can see, I now have eight monster claws, and that's definitely enough than I really need. So, now that we have um, all the tumbleweed, all the monster claws, and the hornet larvae, I am actually full on all the treasures that I really need right now to upgrade the stuff. So, I'm going to head over to the bazaar. No, 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 not the bazaar. I'm going to actually head over to Pippin's, Pippin's house. Yes, because we're going to go take care of another side quest. So, for the side quest, in order to do it, you need the Gus Bellows, so luckily enough, this is probably the best place and time to do it. So inside Pippet's house, as you remember, Pippet is one of the knights who wears the yellow cloth down at the Knight Academy. Here's his mother. Ah, Link, welcome. So here's the thing, Link. My, ho my house is terribly dirty. Pippet is always telling me to do some dusting around here, but I just can't bring myself to do it. That's why I want to ask you if you wouldn't mind cleaning it for me. I'll... Even pay you, Link. You will? Great, I knew you wouldn't leave me and sit in this dirty house. What's that, a broom? You know, I don't even remember where we keep that crazy thing. Most of the time, I just wait for a good strong wind to come along and blow away the dirt. So, if that's not a clear indication at all, we're going to use the Gus Bellows to clean this lady's house. So, um, you definitely want to clean all of the ground around you. As you can see, it's really dirty. I don't know how anybody can let their house get this dirty. I mean, seriously, it's like you're living, living in filth. Like, that's the literal definition of it. Filth. This house. That's what you'll see in the dictionary under the word dirty Pippet's house. Alright, so once we clean the entire floor, we also have to clean a few of the bookcases and the windows. Alright. Just take it slow and steady, make sure you cover every bit of ground before you continue on. Yeah, this is actually a really easy side quest. <laughs> Not much to talk about here. Um, the good thing about this is though, um, Pivot's house will get dirty numerous times and each time you do it you will get paid so you can get lots of money from just doing this. Anyway, we want to clean off the cobwebs. Strange thing, uh, all the pots and pans, I mean all the pots lying around, the Gus Bells will destroy it, but she won't really get upset by the fact that you're destroying her beloved pot, so if that's not incentive enough to just destroy everything in sight, then I have no idea what kind of game you're playing, because this is Zelda. Link destroys pots, that's what he does. And clean the mirror, and uh, I believe that should be everything. Pippet's room is really clean, but You'll know when you're done when this happens, because she'll automatically start talking to you once you clean the entire house. And so for our hard work, um, here's Pippet's room, it's actually really clean. <laughs> Let's see if I can read his journal. Nope, can't. Oh well. Well anyway, let's go talk to her. 
Thank you so much, Link. My home is sparkling clean again. It feels so much better when this place is uh, not under the blanket of dirt. And for that, we get five more gratitude crystals. All right, taking care of side quests here and there. That's my job. And this should bring us up to 25, right? Yeah. All right, I can't let you go without your reward. Watch out, there's some big money coming. Bam, 20 rupees. So yeah, you can come back and clean this house as many times as you want. It might take a while for the house to get dirty again, but each time you do, you will get paid 20 rupees. So then, then she tells us, don't tell Pippet about that. He'll only get angry at me for spending money on something like he thinks I should do be doing myself. So the side quest is not really, I mean, it's technically done, but the implications of it will continue on and I will get to that. Uh, it's a little bit of a continuation on the side quest. It's not really anything, but it's pretty cool. It's interesting. So, um, so for right now, I actually, now that we're done with two side quests and we've collected all these items, I think I should just go upgrade the items that I want to upgrade. So let's head off to the bazaar and go to Gonzo's Scrap Shop. Alright, prepare yourself, you guys, for some awesome upgrading time! So before we actually go take care of that, we want to put away our wooden shield, and instead we want to grab our iron shield. So, let's grab the iron shield. Yes, we haven't really touched this thing at all, but we definitely want it right now, because it's the weakest iron shield that we have, and we're going to upgrade it. Yes, even though I'm not really going to be using it that much from for the rest of the game, I do want to... I definitely do want to upgrade it to the point where it's the max shield, just in case. You never know. Just to show you guys how you upgrade everything in this game. And plus, just to get the 100% completion. At least that's what I would consider as 100% complete anyway. Alright. So not much to do right now. I mean, it's not really exciting that we just repaired the wooden shield that we've been using for a good portion of the game. So, let's upgrade. Oh boy, I'm actually really excited. Alright, so first thing is we want to upgrade our iron shield. So we have all the Elden Ore Monster Claw and the Ornamental Skull, and we have the money for it. Uh, just, just rearranging the seat so I'm a little bit more comfy. <laughs> yeah, this is going to take a while, so... And we get the Reinforced Shield. Alright, so now we're going to upgrade it one more time to get to the best Iron Shield. So we need the blue bird feather, the tumbleweed, the monster claw, and the Elden Ore. Luckily we have everything we need. Yay! Okay! okay. That never gets old. It's amazing how you can just upgrade shields just by using a screwdriver. And we get the fortified shield. Yeah, this shield has a pretty... It's pretty durable. I mean, it has a really long durability meter. Anyway, so now that we've done that, we are going to upgrade our slingshot. We have dusk relics, we have amber relics, and the jelly blob. So the dusk relics are used for a few items. You definitely need them if you want to upgrade everything, so that's why I suggest um, collecting as many as you can while you're in Fair and Woods Silent Realm. But anyway... Once he's done upgrading, for all that hard work for collecting all those treasures, we get the Mighty Scatter Shot. Your shots will now um, pepper a wide range. So this basically, for one seed, you can fire like 10, a little bit of a scatter. Anyway, so next we're going to upgrade the beetle. That's why we needed the two hornet larvae. Alright, you want to upgrade this? No, I don't want to upgrade it. Okay. 
And for all that hard work, we get the awesome and mighty Quick Beetle. It flies faster now. Yes. Um, we can now make it speed up by pressing A, and it's really fun, actually. Um, it's definitely way better than the previous incarnation of the Beetle. And there's one more incarnation left. It's the Stamina Beetles, so you definitely need some more rare treasures in order to upgrade this, but if there's any sort of item, well, I mean, if there's any item in the game that you want to upgrade, I highly suggest upgrading the Beetle to its maximum potential, because the Beetle and its maximum potential is just beyond belief amazing. So, for all that hard work, we got the Tough Beetle. Your beetle can now fly farther than ever, so it can fly faster and farther. It can also, I believe, take a few more hits before it deactivates, so... I'm not entirely sure, I haven't really tested it out that much. Um, we can upgrade the bug net to the big bug net, but we need a couple more ancient flowers. But, anyway, that's basically our entire inventory thus upgraded, except for the bug net. Um... Now I want to put away my wooden shield because where we're going I'm not really going to need it. Uh, even though the wooden shield is the best wooden shield, or the reinforced shield is the best wooden shield of the game, it's still pretty weak. So the next area we're going to, they're going to be tougher enemies. They're definitely going to be tougher enemies from here on out so we're not really going to be needing that shield for the rest of the game. As you can see the meter is really long here and it's a pretty good shield. But, also, at this point in the game, I've got something new in stock. It's a very mysterious shield called the Sacred Shield. Oh my gosh. Sacred Shield? Sacred Shield? Sacred? Yep. We have the final shield that we can grab from this shop. It's a Sacred Shield. Fire, not sweat. Electricity, no painful zaps. Plus, it will automatically repair itself when sustained damage. Yes, this shield is very nice. Unfortunately, it has a really short, um, a really small durability meter. And for some reason, whenever I buy the shield, I just can't get a good enough view of Link holding it. This guy's always in the way. Um, but the nice thing about the shield is not only is it uh, impervious to fire and electricity, unlike the wooden and iron shield, it will repair itself once damaged. And when it repairs itself, it actually does it quite fast, so it's not... A really slow repair it can repair itself pretty fast so whenever you're in a tight spot as long as you have another shield you can just switch out and use the other shield as the other one repairs itself also we have a new potion here it's a blue potion that allows us to breathe much longer underwater water I know I said water but anyway oh fortune teller if only you weren't useless in the game anyway in order to activate the next side quest, you want to talk to this guy. Apparently, he's been hearing some weird rumor that at nightfall, people have been hearing a woman sobbing in the bathroom, I tell you. It gives even a big guy like me the creeps. Yes. So, there's someone sobbing in the, um, night academy at night. So, this actually activates the next side quest that we want to be taking care of. It's a pretty lengthy side quest, but it's also a very nice one. I really enjoy it. So, now that we've upgraded everything we want to, and we have the Sacred Shield, and the Fortified Shield... Sacred Shield. I completely forgot about the fact that that was a Sacred Shield. Don't get me started on the Sacred stuff. Anyway, over here we can talk to Cowlin. Hey, I just checked Bruce's room and this guy is gone. You got an idea where he is? Maybe he had to run away because of his broken heart. What a tough guy. <laughs> Yeah, you're one to talk about broken hearts, aren't you? Anyway. Next thing we want to do is we actually want to sleep in our bed and make it nighttime. Yes, it's the only way that you, ac you can actually make it nighttime in the entire game, because for some reason, this Zelda game likes to make it perpetual day all the time. Anyway. I know there's a Gratitude Crystal right in front of me, but I am not going to collect that. That is one of the few Gratitude Crystals that you can find just randomly sitting around Skyloft. I'm going to just collect them when all at the same time, so I don't forget, like, oh, I did, I completely forgot that I collected this one that many parts ago. So I'm just saving that for whenever 
I get to collecting the last remaining gratitude crystals, and these will be the remaining gratitude crystals. Yeah, there's one in the bush, I know. So don't pester me about it. Don't send me comments saying, oh, you missed one of the gratitude crystals just laying out in the open. I know I did. I'm just... I'm just waiting to grab them all at the same time, so don't bug me about it. <laughs> Alright, that's just me trying to be serious, but seriously, don't bug me about it. Anyway, before we actually go start the next side quest, which deals with the woman in the sky, or in the night academy, sobbing, we want to head back to Pippet's house. Remember how I said that the Pippet side quest was technically not over? Well, we can actually complete the whole thing right now. Now that it's night time. So, once we get close enough to the house... We've been over this, Mom! Mom. Calm down, Pippet. Don't get so mad. How could I not be mad? It's been obvious lately that you've been giving someone rupees to clean the house. I gave you that money so you could buy some bread. If you keep spending money like this... I won't have any money to go to the Night Academy. I didn't take that job patrolling just so you could have a life of luxury. You've got to stop doing this! Oh, hey there, Link. What could you want at this hour? You didn't hear any of that, did you? There's no way you heard it, right? Sorry, I heard it all. It's true, I'm working the night patrol to earn some money. But don't look at me like that. You're not exactly Mr. Perfect either, are you, Mr. Eavesdropper? Maybe you should just forget about everything that happened here tonight. Poor guy, he has a tough, but seriously, you don't yell at your mother like that. Anyway, you could go in and talk to Pippet's mom and she'll be like, Don't worry about Pippet. Oh, don't fly away from me, you jerk. Well, anyway, you could go talk to Pippet's mom, and Pippet's mom will be like, Oh, don't worry about Pippet, I'll deal with him. If you don't ever feel like you are not welcome to clean the house and stuff like that. So, you can still go and clean the house, even though Pippet yelled at his mom about it. She doesn't care. She's a grown-up woman, and she can decide, make her own life choices for herself. But anyway, heading back to the Night Academy, we can actually go talk to Pippet one more time. This guy is a pretty tough, you know. You weren't supposed to see that whole spectacle, Link. I feel so ashamed of my mother sometimes. She's just so lazy sometimes. I don't know what to do. But I'll be fine. You don't need to worry about me. I still haven't worked out who did the cleaning for my mother, though. Who did they think they are getting involved in our business like that? Yeah. Good luck finding that guy. Yep. Alright, so now that we've finished the Pippet side quest or the Pippet's mom in the cleaning house side quest, where let's head off to the Night Academy.